Not sure what to draw today? No worries, we're celebrating the best season of the year with 50 fall doodles. Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we get creative together. If you're anything like me, then you are super excited because the cozy season is upon us. I celebrate fall from August right through till Christmas and I know a lot of you agree with me that fall is the best season. So today I wanted to gift you something to help celebrate that and that is coming at you in the form of 50 fall doodles. These are great little easy things like mushrooms and flowers that you can use to decorate your bullet journal or your sketchbook or whatever. We're gonna get right into it because there's a lot of doodles to cover. And be sure to check out my YouTube channel homepage after this video because I put together a whole autumn playlist, watercolor color, brush pen, all of it autumn themed. I'll link that playlist in the video description so you can check it out later. For now, let's start doodling. I'll quickly share the supplies that I'm using. I'm working in a Canson XL mixed media sketchbook. This is great paper for some wet media, but also pen or colored pencil. And I did my 50 doodle ideas. This is a video from last fall. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. You'll also need a pencil and a fine liner. And I like the Mulatto black liners, but just grab whatever pen you have. Okay, that's it. The countdown is on. Here we go with 50 fall doodles. The first one is a simple maple leaf. I start in pencil with an X and then I use that as my guide to do a simple five pointed leaf with a cute little curving stem at the base. Finish it with a few line details in the middle. And let's move on to our next one. This is what I call my warm up leaf doodle. It's good anytime. It's a great way to just get into the rhythm of drawing. It's just some rounded leaves that come to a point. Let's do a variation on that. We'll do a long stem and then we do these thin, messy little pairs of leaves and they get larger and larger as we go down that stem, giving the look of a forest fall fern. Number four is berries. We've done lots of these on the channel. You can group as many little ovals as you like, join them with some stems and then just add a couple small leaves. The next doodle could be a berry or a flower. We start with a stem and we draw this semicircle of little lines. Each line ends in a tiny dot and then we add some tiny leaves. Get extra help with your doodles and support this channel by becoming a patron. It's only $2 a month or $22 for the year and you get access to all the weekly bonus content that I give. Things like worksheets and that's what I'm giving out today, a doodle worksheet. So go check it out at patreon.com slash Shada Campbell. If you want to doodle something resembling an oak leaf, here's how I do it. I start with a stem with tiny pairs of lines, then I use that as a guide and I go around making this five pointed oak leaf, sort of like an oak leaf. Let's try a pumpkin together. I start with this rectangle shape that's kind of curving. And then I add two more and then maybe one more. <laughs> then a stem at the top and some curly Q lines to show the vines, maybe a leaf or two. That's my basic pumpkin. How about a little pear? We'll keep it small at the top, a little wider at the bottom, simple stem and a leaf and then a bit of dotting to show the texture of the pear skin. <laughs> I don't know. Or how about a cute little mushroom cluster? This would look great at the bottom of a bullet journal page. You just draw a bunch of circles and semicircles in a cluster or a line. You put thin, like super thin little stems on each of them, add a bit of grass and some dotting or lines to show the texture of each mushroom cap and they look so cute. Uh, an acorn would also be a great fall forest find. We'll draw the little semicircle cap with a larger, longer semicircle bottom. And then I like to color in the cap by doing a bit of cross hatching. Uh, and that's about it. Let's stick with the forest finds and draw a feather. You need a line, draw some tiny little hairs at the base. And then we go up and around, maybe cutting in in one little section and some thin lines. And that's your basic feather doodle. You can thicken the quill if you like, you don't have to. This jar of jam is one of my favorite doodles. I do a rounded section for the top, 
Then give it a little wiggly bottom to show fabric, a rounded jar, and you put a label on there, a little bow or whatever, and it always looks so cute. I also love drawing cutesy ghosts. So you start with a semicircle for the head and do, do the little sort of mitt shapes for the hands, bring it to a point, and then the simplest little face. Another ghosty is do a big upside down U shape, give it a little scalloped edge bottom, and then just have fun giving him a face, whether it's a large scary O or a happy smile. Next, let's do a little spider. He needs a little uh, bit of web there, a little bit of string. His body is two circles or an oval with a tiny circle for the head, and then eight legs, of course, or six, you know, whatever. <laughs> this isn't too scientific. For my sunflower, I like to do a big circle filled with scribbles, and then I go around and add these very perfectly imperfect petals. So they're all a little messy. Do a line down the center of each petal just to show the texture. And finally, add a curving stem and two or three leaves. And I like to darken those leaves a little. Okay, how about a yummy fall pie? Start with a curving line, give it that kind of scalloped edge bottom, a few slits on the top where the steam comes out, and then just fill in the pan below and you can uh, add a few lines there. How about a candle in a jar? We'll do this rounded rectangle. And then for the candle, I start with the wick, do the flame, and then you can make a little messy wax shape below it. And sometimes I like to um, do a double line to show glass. I just like that whenever I'm drawing a jar. Now for the queen of all the fall items, the PSL, the pumpkin spice latte. For this one, I like to start with the little lid shape and then we just do a long thin cup here, add a label on top and you can always draw a little pumpkin or a Starbucks uh, kind of green circle on the label. Simple and cute, looks great in a journal. For a cozy winter toque, we'll do an upside down U shape, add lines for texture and a fuzzy pom pom on the top. And then at the bottom, I do this kind of bunchy scalloped line to show the rolled up brim, maybe a couple more lines for that knitted texture. Fall wouldn't be fall without knitting. So for a ball of yarn, I draw a circle and then I divide it into sections using lines at different angles to show the yarn, add some yarn, and then some knitting needles are just these straight lines with a little bobble at the top. How about an apple? But instead of drawing it just the same old way, we can do like a cross section by doing the apple shape and then outlining it to show the skin. And then we could even draw some like tiny little seeds in the center there. Uh, how about some tea? I'll do a little uh, square that comes to a point and that's my little tea bag. You can always put an a cutesy label on it and just show where the tea sits by doing a colored section with those lines. And a tea cup, of course. We'll do a U shape or a half circle and you can add like some cute little leaves or, or whatever to decorate it, give it a base and a handle, maybe some dotting or stripes, and that's your cute little teacup. I'll even put a little steam rising out of the top there. Here's another doodle that I ha actually have a whole video about, a simple tree. We're gonna do the line for the trunk, and then you add all these tiny little branches. It's so simple, you can do as many as you want, and then you add kind of a puffy cloud shape going around and you can do so many fun variations on that. As I said, I've got a whole tutorial and I'll link that in the video description below. I'll complete the top half of my doodle sketchbook page with another berry. I love berry doodles for two reasons. One, they always look so delicate and impressive. And two, you can make them as large or small as you need to to fill in the space. Fall means umbrella weather. I start my umbrella with a pencil guide, that upside down circle, little scalloped edge on the bottom, and then the long curved handle. Then we go over it in pen, you can add some lines, or you could add a nice pattern on there. Just make the handle area a little thicker. You might even color it in. I'll also begin in pencil for my jack-o'-lantern. So do a circle shape and then a stem, two triangle eyes, and a big scary mouth. And then we kind of add some bumpiness to that circle, whether your circle was wide or tall and thin, you wanna bump it up a bit. And then we just go over everything in pen. 
Uh, he's got his big crooked mouth. The circle has those bumpy bits to show the shape of the pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern. We want to add the lines on him. And then it really comes to life when you darken the eyes and the mouth, but don't black them out completely. Just use some tightly packed lines. Let's doodle some more friendly forest critters. A spiral is a great way to start the snail. Then you just add his little body and two little eyes and maybe a bit of shading across his belly. How about an owl? Start with a heart shape with two eyes and then his beak. And then you just go around, maybe a, a sort of square or rectangle with rounded corners, the two wings, some dots on his breast, and you could even add some little claws or feet, talons, I suppose. I tried to draw some wheat here. I don't know, it kind of just looks like weird leaves. <laughs> Let's just move on. Corn on the cob. Start with that cob shape and then place two pointed leaves on each side, one on each side. Bring the base to a bit of a rectangle, draw a grid for the corn. And then I like to color the leaves in with some light line shading. Simple corn doodle. Next, I've got the moon here, little crescent moon. And then I wanted to attempt a monarch butterfly. So start with the body, the long body. Then you're going to add two large wings and two smaller wings. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. This is a doodle. I added a bit of a blacked out area to the end of each wing, as well as colored in the body and added the antennae. From there, you wanna add lines on each wing. Again, it doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical, but mine looked kind of wonky, so I actually found it was easier to just color it in with a ton of lines. And that made for a really cute butterfly doodle. Okay, how about a campfire? I did start in pencil to do this blaze of fire and then draw these angled lines, turn them into logs by putting a circle on the end of each one. Let's do it in pen. So you start with this kind of flame shape, then go around it, make it even larger. And then the logs are just angled lines and you end them with a little circle and you can even color them in, add some extra lines to show kindling. That's your campfire. How about a mug of warm coffee? Do a rectangle that comes to a rounded bit at the bottom and the top. Do a very shallow oval colored in to show the coffee and add that handle. It wouldn't be fall without Halloween candy. For candy, I just do like an oval with these little like bits on the end to show the candy in the wrapper. And then you can draw lines or whatever on your candy pieces. Try a rake. This one I did feel I needed to start in pencil, do a thin handle, comes to a bit of a rounded triangle, and then you have the little rake spindles, whatever you call them. So long handle, rounded triangle at the bottom, and then you have the like little rake bits <laughs> at the base. This one really comes to life when you add some little uh, cute leaf doodles around it. Like, oh, I'm raking leaves, it's fall. <laughs> okay, what's next? A toothy leaf. This one I start with a pencil oval, and then I go around and add all these little shaggy bits for the edges. Do that in pencil first, and then you're gonna go over it in pen, place a line down the center that leads to the stem, and then all these tiny little lines for the veining on the leaf. Candy corn, couple rounded triangles. Just think of a triangle with rounded points, and then the stripes, of course. That's all you need to do. Next, we'll doodle a little fox. We start with another rounded triangle, place two ears, then divide his face in half with curving lines and add eyes and a nose. It's a really simple, cute way to draw a tiny fox face. And once I go over it in pen, you can really see how cute he is. A witch hat, we'll do a triangle that's kind of a little bit off. And then we add this thin brim and a little stripe. And of course, we're just gonna color it in black. I like to leave a little page showing through so it doesn't look like just a dead black. It, it's got some oomph. We can even add some line shading on the stripe. How about a cute little candy holder, like one of those little pots that kids carry around on Halloween? It's got a handle. We can draw a little Frankenstein monster face on it or something and make it look three-dimensional by adding some shading. We need a spider's web. This is a great doodle for your journal. Start with those 
uh, four intersecting lines and then you're just going to go around and around adding these curving lines that join the uh, them all together. I used to love drawing spiders webs as a kid. They're so fun. You can make them enormous of course. I think we need another gourd. We did pumpkins but not really gourds. And just add those curving stripes and maybe some horizontal stripes to show different coloring like all those fun gourds that you pick up at this time of year. I'll also draw a skull. It's this big round area with the teeth at the bottom, two eyes and a little heart shaped nose and you're going to color those in black. I'm reaching the end and I'm running out of space. We'll do a little simple tomato. It's just a circle with that little burst of leaves on top. Um, I guess for Thanksgiving we could draw like herbs like rosemary and sage. For rosemary I do these thin long stems with tiny lines of, for leaves. And then for sage it's really just like <laughs> um, leaves on stems. <laughs> it's so simple. And we'll finish our 50 doodles with a tiny Halloween tombstone. It's just that U shape, put some grass, RIP, and maybe even add a little shading to one side of the tombstone. That's it, 50 cute doodles for Halloween, autumn, fall, all of the good stuff that's coming up. You've got your doodles covered, whether you're bullet journaling or you just need something to draw because you're bored and you wanna relax. I think we've truly covered everything that you'll need. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and friends, if you wanna support the channel and get access to the worksheet, head over to Patreon. It's a great way for you to get that extra guidance and also make these YouTube videos possible. Thanks so much for being here and please if you enjoyed this hit the subscribe button. It means everything to me to see you subscribe to this channel. I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.